In a few weeks' time, on April the 8th actually to be precise, a major phenomena is going to take place here in Canada, especially in this part of Canada, and this is Ford Erie. And that phenomena is going to be the full total eclipse of the sun. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, thereby obscuring the image of the sun, which basically just blackens it out. A total eclipse actually appears when the moon's diameter appears actually bigger than the sun. This eclipse will also be the very first eclipse visible from the provinces within Canada for the first time since 1979. This is Waverley Beach, located here in Fort Erie, and this is actually one of the designated viewing areas as set out by the town of Fort Erie. So in this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain to you what's going to occur on April the 8th, basically the eclipse itself, what to expect, but most importantly, we're going to go back to this, Waverley Beach and other places, and see how a town like Fort Erie is going to cope with the magnitudes of people that might show up. Because a town up the road, Niagara Falls, has been promoting this celestial event for quite some time. And you know what? It's going to be a complete gong show. A spectacular and rare celestial event is set to unfold over Canada. And the best place to see in Ontario is going to be at the east end of Lake Erie, which will be the only place to witness a full total eclipse of the sun. A total solar eclipse can only be viewed from within a narrow path of totality. Its maximum time of darkness will be 3 minutes and 46 seconds. And the best place to view this spectacular celestial event just so happens to be in my backyard, the region of Fort Erie. All right, this is the uh, Fort Erie uh, town hall, basically. So I'm just going to go in here. Uh, I got some donation of food. And for that, I get some, some free eclipse glasses. That's that sorted. This is what we're worrying on the day. But until then, let's go and check out a few of the places. Right, this is Fort Erie's old fort. And this is the actual place where Niagara Parks is having one of its designated viewing areas located here in Fort Erie. It's a great location, it really is. But if we're led to believe what could be happening in Niagara Falls, one million people coming in. If we got 5% of one million, that's 50,000 people coming to this region and the population is only 30,000, where are they all gonna go? So it's thanks to Jim Diodati and the Niagara Parks for putting Fort Erie in a really precarious position right here of being absolutely swamped with tourists for this celestial event. Now, in all fairness, um, this is actually a really, really good location. There's a lot of space here, it's a lot of ground, so it can actually cater probably for a lot of people. But the only problem is, where does everyone park? Um, like I said, there's a lot of green space out here. Just over here is the actual park as well. A lot of green space, but if you're coming down, I wanna really try and scare you right now. All that green space down there, if we get a sage, it's like four feet underwater. And it can happen very quickly here on Lake Erie. So let that be a deterrent to you folks that are thinking of coming down here for the event. Check the weather before you come down because uh, it could play uh, <laughs> a big factor in your day whether you're going to enjoy it or not. And also, uh, being early April, we're not unaccustomed to having weather like this. Big snow squalls coming off Lake Erie. And this was just taken, this video was just taken over here behind me. That snow cloud you just seen was right there. 
There is also no facilities around here whatsoever. There's, there's no porta potties being put out, from what I know of. Uh, I've not heard of plans. But then again, this does belong to Niagara Parks. This isn't the town of Fort Erie. This is Niagara Parks viewing location. So they're in charge of this, not the town of Fort Erie. But there really is nowhere to park. They have a parking lot here, which I reckon they'll probably get about 100, 200 cars in max. And you're not allowed to park on the street. So you've got to keep that in mind. If you're thinking of coming down to Ford Erie for the total eclipse of the sun, plan in advance and do your homework. All right, there are rumors of uh, massive crowds coming to Niagara Falls. And this is particularly down to the mayor of Niagara Falls, Jim Diodati. Uh, on the Niagara Falls website, uh, the city's website, under the page uh, for the eclipse, the first sentence reads this. Uh, Join us on Monday, April the uh, 8th, 2024, uh, to witness a total solar eclipse in the Niagara Falls. Wait for it. Ranked number 11 on National Geographic's Best of the World. So basically they had to put a little tag in there to really entice you to get on down to Niagara Falls and come on down and view the place. The one coming up on April 8th may very well be the only one you will ever experience, if you're lucky. This is an experience beyond all experiences. You can't prepare yourself properly for what this is like. <laughs> This is just unbelievable. <laughs> but you see where we sit in the in the cosmos. You know, because it, uh, we all are experiencing life the same way. So oh, what color, what political, anything, everybody's like. I think it's oh, something we all really need right now. These are just some of the examples of what we expect to see on the day of the eclipse. These were taken from the 2017 eclipse in the United States. The big question in my mind and many other people's mind is how many people are going to be showing up on our doorsteps for this amazing event. Jim Diodati, the mayor of Niagara Falls, made it quite clear he's inviting people down uh, to the region, but at what cost? Niagara Falls website and the Niagara Parks website have been advertising many things that are going to be going on during this uh, event, actually over the weekend and more specifically on April the 8th. There's even going to be a free concert in Victoria Park, which is literally right at the falls. And for those that didn't know, Fort Erie is actually listed as an eclipse viewing location. The old fort, which belongs to Niagara Parks. This now leaves me with one burning question. How many people are we expecting down here? I'll let Jim answer that one. You know, we're, we're, we're hearing all sorts of crazy numbers. We have a huge American documentary company telling us we could expect eight to nine times our biggest crowd, which would have been Nick Walenda in 2012. That would put us at about a million people. To give you a perspective of what a million people looks like, this is Chile, the March of a Million. And this is the Metallica concert in Russia back in the 90s where over a million showed up. Uh, parking lots will be full. We're telling people, don't show up at the last minute. There could be a million people. There could be a million people. Traffic is bad as it is most days, especially during the summer months coming to Niagara Falls. So how the hell are we going to cope with a million people coming into the region? They're advising travelers to take public transit, like Go Transit Train and the bus. But keep in mind, a 12-car GO train can only hold 2,400 people. So it's going to take a lot of trains to move even 100,000 people. A lot of trains. And a bus, just under 90 passengers. All right, this is Ferndale Park in Fort Erie. And to be quite honest, this is probably actually a really good location uh, for the local people of Fort Erie to come and view uh, the celestial... Um, eclipse. <laughs> I forgot what I had to say then. <laughs> so anyway, a big open park space, ideal for everyone. Bring your chairs, your picnic table, whatever. If the weather's nice. Uh, no of securities of like loads of trees. So it, it's, the sun should be somewhere just up there uh, during the eclipse. Um, so this is really a good location for the people of the community to come out for sure. Uh, but speaking of community. This is Crystal Ridge Park, 
another one of the designated uh, viewing areas as put out by uh, the town of Fort Erie. And this is located here at Crystal Beach itself. Uh, just to my side here is the actual uh, ice rink here for Crystal uh, Beach, the community center, whatever you want to call it. And uh, just another two kilometers down that way will be the lake. And that's where we're going to be going very shortly. But this is one of the designated areas. And it's not bad, actually. It's ideal, once again, for the local people. Um, parking. <laughs> Once again, probably a couple hundred cars. Uh, so we start getting these crowds from out of town coming down. I don't know where they're going to go, uh, but it is a great spot. I mean, there's a lot of open field here. Um, the football field or soccer field, whatever you want to call it, good kid area and so on. We've even got a dog park here now as well, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the sun during the eclipse, from where I am looking, look at my compass a minute. So we've got the compass. So, all right, the, uh, the full effect of the eclipse should be just about there. So it should start around about there and end there, but the, the full darkness, the sun should just be up that way, 266 degrees. The town of Fort Erie has put out its own advisories and also a list of road closures leading up to the event um, of the eclipse. So uh, one of those uh, pertains to an area I love going to all the time. And it's really affected me because I really want to get out on the water during this eclipse because I make a bit of money out of being out on the water doing some video shooting. So uh, it's kind of hitting into my little bit of revenue there. So anyway, I'm going to go down to uh, the waterfront here and tell you a little bit more. All right, let's talk about closures that's going on down here in Fort Erie um, and some of the restrictions are put on. So the town of Fort Erie on the March 14th uh, sent out a memo on, um, on its website highlighting some of the things that's going to be happening. One of those is a fire ban. There is going to be a complete fire ban running from, get this, because the eclipse is on a Monday, Friday the 5th of April right through till Tuesday the 9th. So I fully understand uh, Monday if the weather's nice. Probably even Sunday people show up. But Friday and Saturday, that I, I'm not too sure about. Unless they already know in the back of their minds this gong show is really going to happen and we're going to get swamped with people. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. Another thing they're, they're doing, they're illegal camping. Now that doesn't really appeal, that's not something any of the residents around here will have a problem with, illegal camping. And quite rightly so, they should be enforcing that. There should never be any illegal activities in the first place. Illegal parking, uh, that could be a big problem to enforce, especially when uh, if we expect thousands and thousands of people to come, where they're gonna go. Uh, most of the parking lots that are around only handle a couple hundred cars at a time, some a lot less than that. So that would be interesting too. Road closures. Town of Ford area has listed some of its road closures and they mainly pertain to the Crystal Beach area. Um, the main one being, well, there's two actually main ones, uh, Point Abano Road South uh, at Erie Road. And I presume that's going to be closed more than anything because you can't really see the sun from there anyway. It's behind you and really hard to see. Uh, so I can only imagine the closing that so you can't access the uh, the ramp there to the uh, the lake. Uh, the main closure is Crystal Beach Waterfront Park, Ridgeway Road, where will be closed at Crystal Beach Drive before the Millington Skyway and closed at Crystal Beach Drive and Lake Avenue intersection. That is here. So you will not be able to turn up this road. It will be all closed off. And uh, this is what's concerning and, and also misleading. They're actually closing off. Um, oh, my gimbal's gone all funny. What's going on there? Um, they're closing off the waterfront and it says the park's closed as well. So they're closing down this whole area. Um, it just says close, full stop, close. And it even mentions the park, which is this park right here. So they're closing that, but I'm hearing from a few people, they're allowing people to walk here, but it clearly states it's closed. But they're actually closing the boat ramps down as well, so we will not be able to access the water. It states on their website, they uh, strongly advise you to stay off the water. Uh, so what they've done, they've closed all the public ramps, so you can't get on the water either. So kind of a bit of a killjoy, really. Why should I have to suffer? Because uh, you've got a load of tourists coming down. Why should the local residents of the Ford Erie region have to suffer because you're bringing a load of tourists down to celebrate this celestial event, and then, then, it, then they'll all bugger off, and it's a once in a lifetime, and I really had thought about this for over a year, of wanting to be out on the lake if the conditions were correct. That's what I wanted to do.
just been speaking to one of the residents down here and he's heard there's been a miscommunication from the town of Fort Erie. Don't know how true that is, but apparently there's a miscommunication. The park behind me will be open to foot traffic and so will this, will be foot traffic only. No cars, but the park will be open. That's what I'm being told. But there's only one washroom, so keep that in mind. And this is Crystal Beach. This is where I think the majority of tourists may come down to. It's right by the water. It's a well-known area of the south coast of Canada and it attracts a lot of people all summer long. Everyone knows about Crystal Beach. This is the area I'm really the most concerned about is people coming into Crystal Beach through Ridgeway and places like that. And there's a parking lot just over here and it's absolutely tiny. It's like in the peak summer, the beach only holds 2000 people. Uh, for safety reasons. So can you imagine a few more showing up? How crazy that's gonna be? Anyway, I'll take you over here. Let's go and have a look. So there's the parking lot right there. Um, that is it. <laughs> now they have this small little park, this private one here and the one next to it. And that really is the only places you can park in this area. Just in that section over there should be the full clips. Somewhere around about here. So as you can say, on the beach down here in the summer, only up to 2,000 people can get on the town side uh, for legal matters, but there is more of a private area over there and more private bits down there. And I don't know who's going to enforce all this privacy act. I really don't. It's going to be hard if we get a load of people coming down. And like I said, I think this area will be the hardest hit in the region um, outside of Niagara Falls. I think a lot of people will want to come down here if the weather is good. So uh, that is a big concern because really we don't have the infrastructure to handle 10,000 people. I just speaking to a couple of people uh, up the road and a couple of people have heard, they've heard a number for the region, 50,000 people. They may get 50,000 people down here. Now put that into perspective, our population in the region of Fort Erie is only 30,000 people. That's Fort Erie, Ridgeway, Crystal Beach, Stevensville, and that's it, 30,000 people. Now, even by doubling that, it's, it's, it'd be a disaster, but 50,000 people will absolutely be nuts. The Great North American Eclipse is nearly upon us. April the 8th, many people have been waiting this for many, many years. Like I said earlier on in the video, it's the first time it would be in any of the Canadian provinces since 1979, so it's actually a big event. And for those people, the naysayers who are not looking forward to it, just check out some of the videos from previous eclipse, especially in the United States from 2017 on YouTube. You'll see people in absolute awe at this spectacular sight. I am so excited to witness this celestial event i really really am but i'm also dreading the reality of that our town could be inv invaded and we cannot handle the multiple levels of people coming into our town it really could be a gong show i really hope i'm wrong and everyone has a fantastic time i'm like some of the other people on some of the websites talking i hope it snows i hope it rains i hope it's miserable or whatever a part of me thinks that as well but the other part of me wants it to be sunny and glorious and everyone have a spectacular time but i really am concerned about how many people are being forced down this way because Niagara Falls is going to be over capacity and there's just going to be a nightmare everywhere. So anyway, with that said, I really, really hope you enjoy the celestial event of the total eclipse of the sun. And uh, I will be documenting the day from here. I don't know if I'm going to do any live feeds. There is a lot of people here that the, the, the um, the signal uh, from the cell towers could be really, really uh, jammed with the amount of people here. So what I'll be aiming to do is just document the whole day as we go along. If the weather is nice, I will try and get out on the lake, but if the weather is not nice, I will be on the ground uh, from various locations. If I can get to it, I'm have to use my cycle and uh, cycle everywhere to get to them. But uh, I will be out and about trying to document it the best we can, and we'll get a video out straight after the eclipse. And I really hope the town of Fort Erie has done their homework along with the fire department one and it works out wonderful and we don't have a shit show like we had when we had the blizzard on that note have a wonderful uh, eclipse and i'll see you very soon all right i need coffee it's cold